A good Nair Shabbos, everyone, on this Thursday evening. As we uh, hear in the background, uh, uh, firecrackers uh, from the uh, July 4th celebrations. Uh, and uh, we are uh, learning now the special segment called For the Shabbos Table, Pasha's Kairach edition. Uh, we're broadcasting specially from my bungalow in Elm Shade Estates, South Fallsburg. And uh, we give appreciation to the Rubin family for making this uh, special segment available from week to week. What far sa- foresight that they have to make this available. And uh, we, um, we ask everybody, their request is, is that we should all have them in mind, that they should be zeichot to a ben zacher, a healthy male child, besides, of course, that they should have hatzlacha in ruchnias and gashmias. In this parasha, as we know, as we spoke by the main uh, shir on Kairach, this is the parasha where the Rabbi Nishon tells us uh, that there's a lav the araisa to do any type of fighting. It says, Lysia, you shouldn't be like Kairach and his cohorts. A uh, person should run for Machlaikis. And we quoted in the main shear that the Shalah Kaddish Zechitzav Kaddish Aleinu says that Machlaikis Achas Doicha Meyaparnasis. That one fight, one uh, bitter argument can uh, push away and uh, take away a hundred livelihoods. And on a very simple le- level, it's very good that Machloikis is chelek moves, is a portion of death, because we know that it doesn't have to literally mean death, because we know ani chashiv kemes. A poor person is like one who is dead. And uh, in very, very many ways, a poor person when a person is poor, then their friends uh, disappear. Because a poor person wants things from people and can't give back. And uh, therefore all the fair weather friends disappear. He's like a, a, a dead man. And a person who uh, is poor doesn't see any light at the end of the tunnel and things are black like a person who is dead. So uh, since Machlaikis takes away people's livelihoods, it is a chelik mavis. It's like a portion of death. Now, I, I thought of this, but then I heard it also was said uh, by Rav Shmuel Kamenetsky, the Rosh Shiva of Philadelphia, uh, Shlita, Kivanti, that the reason why on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Aseris Mechuvah, that we say, B'Sefer Chaim Bracha, B'Shalom of Farnasa Taiva, in the Bracha of Sim Shalom, is because Parnasa Taiva is linked to Shalom. Because if there's not going to be Shalom, if there's Machlaikis, then it's Doicha Meya Parnasas, and there's not going to be Parnasa Taiva. So that's why we say Hashem should grant us shalom, and then we will be able to be written in the Sefer Chaim Bracha V'Shalom of Farnasa Taiva, because one is Tully and the other. Um, I also th- think that that's why in the request we say the Sefer Chaim Bracha V'Shalom of Farnasa Taiva, saying shalom right before Farnasa Taiva, because one is dependent on the other. As it says in the famous Pasik, Hanosein b'gvuleich shalom. He gives in your border peace, and then chelav chitim yazbiech. Then the cream of the week will satisfy you. But if there isn't in your house shalom, if there's fighting in the house, then there's not going to be parnasa. And of course, that becomes cyclical because if there's no parnasa, then of course there's tension. That's why it says in Pirkei Avos, mar b'tzedaka mar b'shalom. If you give and charity and help people that are in trouble, you increase your shalom. Mida connected mida by relieving people and giving them money and taking away the 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 friction 
that's in a home that doesn't have money, you are increasing their priests, and in Mida Keneg and Mida, Hashem will increase our peace. And I believe that when we start the work week, right, after Shabbos, we start the work week. Sheish is Yomim Tavoy. You know, Sunday is an American thing. But uh, in Eretz Yisrael, of course, Sunday is a work day. You know, somebody told me they moved to Eretz Yisrael and they couldn't get used to the fact that Sunday is a regular work day. Right? Sheish is Yomim Tavoy. You work six days. What do we do at the beginning of the work week? Our first prayer of the work week is Atochan Antonu. And what do we say as we start the new week? Hochel Oleinu Ayomim Abom Likrasenu Lishalom. Start the days that greet us with Shalom. Chasuchim Mikol Chait, empty of all sin. Menukim Mikol Oven, clean of any iniquities. And we should be, we should cleave. We should be attached to your fear. Now we would think that we shouldn't start off with Shalom. We should start off that we shouldn't sin. And we should be attached to Hashem's fear. Because our relationship with Hashem is paramount. And that we shouldn't sin. And then put on afterwards Shalom. But when you want to start the work week, and you want to have a tzlach with the work week? The first thing is, But without shalom, you're not going to have a tzlach in the work week. Because I also think that this is the reason why, you know, in our benching, benching is such a, a great opportunity it's three brachas to Raisa and one bracha to Rabbana. I should give a plug now that we recently reprinted. It wasn't available for a few years already. But with the help of good people, we were able to print the hard copy of Power Benching. And if you want to have over 300 pages of what to have in mind with three brachas to Raisa, and one bracha de Rabbanan, uh, you could get my power benching. It's $25 plus the postage on the envelope. If you're interested in ordering it and you want an autographed copy, so text me, 718-916-3100, or email me, rmmwsi at aol.com. Um, so once we do the three brachas to Raisa and the one bracha to Rabbanan, because I tell you, my mate, uh, B'yavna Tiknua, so the bracha of Hazan and al Aretz al Amazan, Uvnei Yishlaim, those are three brachas that are biblical. The first bracha was, its text was made by Moshe. Second bracha, the text was made by Yeshua. The third bracha, the text was made by David and Shlomo. Those are the Raisa, and then the Ateva Meitav is the Rabbanan. Once you do three Daraisas and one Rabbanan, it creates such a time of favor that we could ask Hashem for many Harachamans, many things. Right? Right? Harachaman Yishlon Ateva. You know, very, very rare do we ask Hashem that we should have the afterlife. But we say, It's a lot of Arachamans. So one of the Arachamans in benching is Arachaman who yishlach lanu bracha meruba babayis hazeh the al shulchan He should give us blessing in our house and on the table that we work on. I remember that when I used to send out hundreds of tapes every week, we would work on our dining room table because since we say that in the in the request uh, that Hashem should send 
bracha to the shulchan zesh achamu alav. I wanted it to come from the shulchan that we ate from. But we say that Hashem should send blessing to the house and to the table. And I think that it's pshat is as follows. Wouldn't it be double talk? This house and this table. The answer is the house rep- refers to our wife. Like it says, Mordechai Mordechai took Esther as a daughter. Nigmar says, Al tikre levas el lebayis. Bayis, a wife is called a house. So when we say, Arachman Yishlach Lano Baruch Maruba Babayis says that, that means that he should send blessing to our wife. There should be peace. And once there's peace, then automatically, Val Shulchan Zesh Then there'll be blessing to the table. Very, very important. And that's what Rava, Rava was a great Rav of a very rich town. We learned it in the Daf. Rava is, was the Rav of Mechuzah. Mechuzah was a port city. It was a very, very wealthy city. And Rava was the Rav of Mechuzah. Also was a city of Gerim. It's a very interesting city, Mechuzah. Rava said... I beg of you, listen to my advice. You know, you're all into import and export, but I'm telling you where the key lies. Okiru nishaychu, honor your wives, kiechi the disaster, in order that you'll become wealthy. You treat your wives right, and there's shalom in the house, then things will go well. As it says, Ein bracha metzuya besek beise shaladam ela bishvil ishtai. And I want to say that that's the meaning when we say in benching, we say, Azan esa olam kulay betuvay. Hashem supports the whole world with his goodness. Now, of course, betuvay means bread. Bread is good. But it means something else. Taiv means Taira. Ain't Taiva la Taira. Shenem akilekach Taiv no sati lochem. Goodly merchants, merchandise I have given you, Tairasi al Tazaivu. And my Talmidim have heard me say this. This is my own gematria. I'm very proud of it. Lekach Taiv is exactly the gematria 155. It's exactly the gematria dafayaymi. Dafayaymi is 155. A goodly merchandise. What a merchandise. You learn every night. First of all, make sure that you learn every night at Daf Gemara. And with that plan, in the seven and a half years, you finish Shas. All the Mesechtas. You plow your way through your Bummers and Erevin and, and Bava Metziah and Bava Basra. I mean, it's a Vachim. It's amazing. So that's Hazan Esayilam Kula Bituvai means with Taira because it ain't Taira in Gemach. If there's no Taira, there's no flower. But there's something else that's called Taiv. Ain't Taiv Ela Ishtai. Shenemar Matza Isha Matza Taiv. Loi Taiv Eyaisa Adam Levadai. So Hazan Esayilam Kula Bituvai means that. We thank Hashem for our wives that prepare our bread, that give us our food. But more than that, if there is peace with a wife, then there's going to be panasa. There's no peace. And I want to tell you something. If you think this is a stretch, so it's okay. You don't have to like this. I'm not 100% sure, but I have a suspicion. I have a suspicion. It says, Baruch Aleinu, Hashem Aleikeinu, right, the, the, the blessing of Parnassah. So it says, Baruch Aleinu, Hashem Aleikeinu, Bless us, 
It's a Shona Hazais. This year, somebody is not muted. Um, uh, I got it. I got the person. Baruch Aleinu, Hashem Alekeinu, Es Hashona Hazois L'Tayva. What's that word L'Tayva? It seems to me to be superfluous. What do you think? Baruch Aleinu, Hashem Alekeinu, Es Hashona L'Ra? If I'm asking Hashem to bless it, so then obviously it's going to be L'Tayva. I'm not asking Hashem to bless the year, Lara, for bad. So why does it say Baruch Aleinu Hashem Alekeinu as Hashem Azois L'Toiva? And I think the answer is Baruch Aleinu Hashem Alekeinu as Hashem Azois. You know why? L'Toiva. Because of the Torah learning. And L'Toiva because of the way we are with our wives. And again we p- repeat it. V'sabeinu mituvecha. Satisfy us from toiv. Should be satisfying us from ra. But again, satisfy us because of our occupation in your toiv, in your taira. And because of the way we behave with our wives. Just a thought. Just a thought. You don't have to like it. We know that the world rests on certain things. That we know. We know that the world can't exist without Torah. I wouldn't have made the statutes of heaven and earth. That's why I told you many times that in the old yeshiva, the mother of yeshiva's Velazhin, they learned in three shifts. They learned in three eight-hour shifts. They always had learning through the night. They only had submarine beds in the yeshiva of Velazhin. They didn't have, if they had 200 people in Velazhin, they didn't have 200 beds. Right? They had 200 divided by three. Well, no, they, because... They, they went in three shifts. So we need tyrant for the world to survive. There's another Yesod Ha'olam, that one of the Amude Ha'olam, one of the pillars of the world, are people that have a unique Kayach. It says, Toila Eretz Al Blima. Now, the literal translation of Taylor Eretz Avlima is that you look in the sky with a telescope and you see that the earth is suspended actually you, you can't see the earth with a telescope but you look at other planets and from pictures that we see from uh, out of space we know that the world is, seems to be hanging on nothing. There's no pedestal for the world. Toila Eretz Ablima. The world is suspended on nothing. That's the simple meaning. But the Gemara says, Blima is, the Gemara homiletically says, Eina Oila Miskayim. The world only exists A person that knows how to zip it in the time of fighting. Those are the Mekaime Ha'ilam, the upholders of the world. I mean that's a, it's that's how big it is in the eyes of Hashem. A person who doesn't have to have the last word. A person who has the intelligence to be quiet. This, by the way, 
is a acquired talent. This is something that takes years to cultivate. The Gemara in Chulin says, Ma um shal adam What's a person's profession in this world? So you'll say, what do you mean, what's a profession? Depends. You might be an accountant, a plumber, a doctor, a lawyer. You might be a clown. You might be a salesman. But there is a profession that everybody is supposed to have. Train yourself to be like a mute. Know that in a time of tension, in the heat of the moment, know how to keep your mouth shut. To behave like a mute. It's a very big thing. Somebody went to the great guy in Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Abach. And he said to Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Abach, that uh, he's, he is having a disagreement with someone. And he doesn't know what to do. So Rav Shlomo Zalman Abach says, let me tell you something. If you're going to fight back, then that's going to cause the other person to have to respond. If you're quiet, so then there's nothing for the other person to say, and it'll die down. And he said that he once heard from a gadol, he didn't say from who, but from Shlem Azam and Abba called him a gadol. It says in Tehillim, Perak Mem Zayim, Pasik Lam El Ches, Va'ani kecheresh loy eshma. I will be like one who is deaf, and I'll make it like I didn't hear. U ke'ilem loy eftach piv, and like a mute who doesn't open mouth. Now, if it's talking about the same person, he asks Rabbi Shalom Zalman, it should say, Like a mute, I don't open my mouth. But it doesn't say that. It says, His mouth. So Rabbi Shalom Zalman says, if you make yourself deaf, then the other person will make himself like mute and it'll, it'll die down. Now, Rabbi say. We know a terrible thing that uh, Das and Aviram, what they did, what Kairach did. Rav Lochem, it's enough for you. Kairach said, the whole assemblage is holy. Why do you elevate yourself above the assemblage of Hashem? Part and parcel of being a good Jew is to accept that our Gedalim are elevated above us. They're living in a different plane. I always tell people if you want to understand what a great person is. You know, they say about the previous Sat- Satma Rebbe that he hardly slept. His birchas hamapal on going to sleep was longer than his sleep. He slept for less than an hour and his bracha on the sleep was more than an hour. Now, if you could comprehend that, the fact that we can't even comprehend it, it means we're, we're just... They're so elevated more than us. We, it's, we, have to, we have to teach this to our children. We follow the words of our G'daylam. Every, every generation has its G'daylam. You know, we, we just lost a great man in Rav Wolfson. And whenever we, we lose someone, I try to buy one of the magazines, the Jewish magazines, that have stories because I want to learn. I want to learn. One of the best ways to learn is to read about, especially the dilemma of our generation because it's more relevant to us. While I bought 
the mishpacha expecting to read about Rav Wolfson, I was bowled over to hear three stories from Rav Wolfson about the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Rav Wolfson was close to Lubavitcher Rebbe. The first story is that when, when someone asked him why he's, he, went, he went to Lubavitcher Rebbe like anybody else to get dollars. So he says, you want to know why I feel this way about the Lubavitcher Rebbe? He said, one time I had an Enakil, a grandchild, Elena, that was sick. So I was in Eretz Yisrael, and I, for the schus of the grandchild, I made it my business to go late in the night to the rarefied Churbushul. I was there the last time. I, I spent, I stayed in, in a small motel in the old city. And I have, most of the time I daven at, at the Kaisel, three fills a day. But I daven in the Churbashul. So he said that he went in the night in the Churbashul, and very few people were there. And he said Kriyashma Alamita with a lot of Kavana. And in the Nusachari version of Kriyashma Alamita, you say over the Pasik Lev Nishbar Venitke Alekim Sivza. A heart that's broken and crushed, Hashem doesn't despise. And Rav Wolfson, with his great kavana, said that pasuk over many, many times. Comes back from Eretz Yisrael, he goes to get a dollar from the Rebbe, waiting on the long line. And uh, when he gets the dollar, he bends down and says to the Rebbe that he needs a bracha for his grandchild. So the Rebbe looked at him. And said a person that says Leiv Nishba Venitke Alekim Loisivza with a lot of kavana will see blessing. Just that it happened thousands of miles away. Rebbe never left 770. It reminded me, this story reminded me of a story with Rebellia Lapian. Rebellia Lapian, his wife was ill. And the doctors already gave up hope on her. And he was lying there. Uh, he was uh, standing by his w wife's sickbed. And suddenly a man with a beard comes in and, 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 and asks him to follow him. He goes out and the man takes him and shows him a plant. He says, dig up this plant grind it and put it in a tea, give it to your wife, she'll get better. So look, the doctors already gave up hope on her. So he did it. And she had a remarkable recovery. The man disappeared. And Rebelli Lapian felt that that was Gilu Yelio. Rebelli Lapian goes to Eretz Yisrael and he goes to the Ger Rebbe for a bracha. And he's standing in front of the Ger Rebbe. And he asks the great Ger Rebbe for a bracha. So the Ger Rebbe tells him, a man that has Gilu Yaliyo doesn't need my bracha. Now nobody knew about this. Rebbe, uh, he, didn't, he didn't, in those days, he didn't, wasn't a fireman. So his answer to the Ger Rebbe was, a man who knows that I had Gilu Yaliyo, I want his brother. But anyway, the second story is even more remarkable. It shows us what it means to have G'daylam. Rav Wolfson needed, his cardiologists said that he needed a heart procedure. So he was already in the hospital, in a hospital gown, and he realized that he didn't ask the Lubavitcher Rebbe for a bracha. He got dressed, left the hospital, and went to the Rebbe. And the Rebbe told him, Noch nicht, you don't need it yet. So he checked himself out and he didn't do it. Now fasten your seatbelts. 
20 years later, they told him he needs the procedure. The Rebbe was already in Shemayim. So he went to the oil of the Rebbe and he davened profusely and he asked that there should be a sign. Now if you're ever at the oil, I was there once, you come out and in the, in the room there's a screen that plays from different things from the Rebbe. When he comes out of the room, he sees on the screen from 20 years ago Pump that moment, him speaking to the Rebbe and the Rebbe telling him Nachnish. It's, it's you know what the, the astronomical chances are that at that moment he should see that. The third story is that he uh, he went ten weeks of the year to uh, Eretz Israel. And of course, the great Rav Wolfson, the Mashkiach, when he went there, so everybody wanted him to talk. So one summer, he told his wife, this time I'm going to Israel, I'm not going to take any speaking. I'm this guy, I, I, I want to learn, I want to daven. Before he left, that was upended. Because before he left, he went to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe gave him two dollars. One dollar for himself and one dollar for all his speaking. I want to tell you that in my family, I, I, I never met the Rebbe. I never went there. Not because I just never left Yeshiva to go to the Rebbe. To try, I've never had a reason to travel to Crown Heights. Whenever I missed out on seeing the great man, I feel bad about it. But uh, in our family, everybody knows my, my uncle's illustrious family, uh, Ravasha Weiss, who's famous all over the world, is my first cousin. And he has six brothers, who each one knows the entire Shas, every Tysus in Shas. So the, his oldest brother is Rabbi Yaman Weiss. He's the of Bezdin of Montreal, the chief rabbi of Montreal. 45 years ago, before I was married, this Rabbi Yaman Weiss, one of his children needed a surgery from a, uh, a specific doctor who was in Binghamton, New York. Binghamton was much less than it is now. And it turned out on emergency he had to go on sukkahs. There wasn't a sukkah anywhere near the hospital. And he felt very bad. He never in his life ever ate outside of a sukkah. And now he's not going to have a sukkah. They have to run, they have to go right before Yom Tov. He gets to the hospital and he sees a Lubavitcher man putting up a sukkah by the hospital. So he's shocked. He goes to him, are you here for sukkahs? He said, no. So why are you putting up a sukkah? He said, the rabbi told me that there's going to be a younger man that's going to need a sukkah. So I'm here to put up a sukkah. You must be him. We have to understand you know what it means? And this was talking about Moshe Rabbeinu, Madu, Tisnasi. You know, every generation, you know, they used to ask great men, Bameharach the Yomah. They asked for Moshe, what merit did you live into your 90s? He said, Man Gan Slevin, Man Gan Slevin, my whole life. I never caused another person a pain. All, all life. Same thing Rabbi Yaakov said, they asked him, he also lived into his 90s. He says his whole life he tried never to tell a lie, and he also tried never to hurt someone. You know, we mentioned Rabbi Elia Lapian, they asked Rabbi Elia Lapian, Bameharach Yaman. 
So Rabbi Elia Lapian said, Miyoyim omdi al daiti. From the day that I stood upon my maturity, loikaasti loy l'shum adam v'loy l'shum dav. I didn't get angry to any person or any matter. These are the people we're talking about. You have to understand that these people, their heads tower in the sky. We have to be very careful how we talk about them. We have to be very careful to follow them. We thank the Rubin family for making this segment possible. We thank you for joining us and wish you a very good Shabbos.